The place where I live is ancient, old but sturdy, our landlady tells us. 500 Belgrave is so strong, apparently, that it withstood the 1906 earthquake. Didn't even bust a single crack, is what the landlady says. But between you and me, I wouldn't bet on history repeating itself. It's the reason why I live on the top floor. For if this building collapses, then at least they will have too far to dig me out. Of course, I don't wish any harm to my neighbors, especially not to the gentleman living just beneath me. As for the sullen woman on the ground floor who insists on calling me Mary because she finds Mariah too hard to pronounce, well, that's another story. But I wish even her no harm. I'd like to imagine that when the big one strikes, we'd all be gathered at my place and join a glass of wine and we'd ride the whole thing out and live to tell the tale. But who knows, when the earth finally decides that it's tired of fidgeting and needs a proper stretch, I might be the one walking downstairs. If that's the case, then the only survivors will be my books, hundreds of them, to keep each other company. Hey guys, I'm back again with a review of like a mule bringing ice cream to the sun. It's by Sarah Ladipo Manika. Here's a picture of her. She's the author. She is Nigerian and has lived in France, England, Kenya, and Nigeria. Okay, so the first the the excerpt that I read to you is the very first second pages of this book and you get a good glimpse of who is the main character of this book just from that first paragraph. We're talking about Mariah. She is a doctor of literature. She is 74 years old and lives in San Francisco. She drives around in a 911 Porsche she wears bright colored clothes and she walks with a certain grace and it's hard not to notice her or to kind of fall in love with her character. When I'm 74, I hope I'm just like Mariah. But anyway, this book focuses on Mariah's life as an older woman and it focuses on this idea of independence and are we doing the things we want to be doing and how we fit into the scheme of our community um, or our, our building or wherever we are where we have to connect with other people how do we fit into the scheme of these of the of these different situations and different relationships we have with these people and this book being that it's only 118 pages well, it's like a novella does it very well, explains very well what community is and this idea of independence and depending on people, that kind of thing. Now, the characteristic about the book that's very interesting is every time there's a character is speaking, it's always in the first person. So you probably will think, oh no, you have to work really hard to distinguish one character from another but that's not the case it flows very well and you quickly understand who's speaking but i think it does a very good job of y uniting the different characters with mariah who is the main character while at the same time comparing and showing that these different fears that we have about being with other people and having a certain sense of independence and being confident. These are all things that everybody doesn't matter who or what level they are, if they're rich or they're poor or whatever, that we all have some of the same feelings. So the author does this very well. The book basically starts out like that. And so she, you hear her making a little bit of commentary on her neighbors. But as the beginning of the book unfolds, you see Mariah in the, you know, in, in her interactions with these different people. And it gives you a good idea about what's going on in that particular community and how Mariah reacts to them as well as how they react to her. Now, that continues on until one day Mariah has an accident. And it's in having this accident that her independence is 
taken away from her and we then focus more on this idea of how is Mariah going to cope. This is a highly full functioning 74 year old woman who is extremely independent and now suddenly she has no independence. It's fantastic. I think it's a really good uh, depiction of a character who is older, which sadly that a lot of books don't have main characters that are over 50 years old. You can find 50 but over 60, 70 years old, not so much. So this is one if you want to read a book with the main character being older, it's a really good book to read. And it is a, a, a black woman so it's very interesting to see how she's depicted into this world of San Francisco. After she's traveled around the world, she's She's lived in Kenya, she's lived in France and England, and lots of different places she's lived, and she is a literary professor. So there are lots of references in the book to different books, different authors. There's even a mention of Evelyn Champagne King. Come on now, you got to read this. Evelyn Champagne King. If you don't know who she is, Google her. She's a singer. Fantastic. All right. That's about it. I'm not going to tell you any more because I'll ruin it for you, but I really enjoyed it. I think I gave this one four stars. I would definitely recommend you check out Cassava Republic. It's an independent Nigerian book publisher. And I also read earlier this month, Born on a Tuesday by L. Nathan John. That as well was fantastic. I think I gave Born on a Tuesday five stars. It's a very, very good read. The the books are always uh, published with this kind of cover where you have the, the dark brown at the bottom and some kind of a drawing up at the top. Uh, but well worth the read and it's a quick read. It's only 118 pages. Check it out. Bye.